guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're doing my September audiobook wrap-up. If you aren't familiar with my channel, I do two reading wrap-ups every month, usually, and I do a physical reading wrap-up and an audiobook wrap-up. So all of my physical reads I posted yesterday, I'll link that up here in the cards. You guys can click that little I and check that video out, because those are all the books that I I physically read with my eyeballs for September. So for September, I finished eight audiobooks. I was really, really happy. I had such a good reading and listening month, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about all these delicious books. So the first book that I read was The Apprentice Witch by James Nicole, narrated by Elizabeth Nolden. Elizabeth Nolden is one of my all-time favorite narrators. She has been the theme for this year. Last year, Rebecca Soler was like my narrator that I listened to the most. This year, I'm like all things Elizabeth Nolden. She has a beautiful British accent and she is just perfect for these like spooky whimsical royalty type reads. So this is a middle grade series about a girl that is apprenticing as a witch and she's learning to get her witchy skills so she can go and be a witch for that particular town. They designate witches to these towns to take care of all of their needs. It's set kind of like in an older era and I loved it. It was super adorable. It's just got like little misadventures and she's learning to be a witch and learning things about herself and she kind of struggles through those times and then she's got to deal with things that happen in the town and oh it was just really really cute and I wound up giving this one a four stars. Next up I listened to His Heart and Other Body Parts by Ira Bloom narrated by Lauren Fortgang. I was recommended this book by one of my subscribers and thank you so much. This is a minimal retelling reimagining of Frankenstein. This is about three sisters. They're all witches. They're all in high school and they're all like really close and really cute and a new boy shows up at school and he is kind of strange looking. He looks like he's kind of been put back together. So from that I kind of got the Frankenstein vibes and the Frankenstein retelling. But this book is so much more than that. It also has a little bit of a Dracula retelling mixed in here because we've got some vampires that show up and I just wasn't expecting that to happen. I was perfectly satisfied with the Frankenstein portions and the witches. There is a talking cat in here so you get like Sabrina the Teenage Witch vibes. This in my mind is like the ultimate fall Halloween read because you've got the Frankenstein, you've got the witches, you've got the talking cat, there's demons and magic and there's Dracula and vampires. And, ooh, it was so, so good. I cannot tell you how much I loved this book and you guys all need to go run out and read it. It was not scary at all. It's very fun and adventurous and mysterious and just a little bit creepy and dark but nothing like intense. It's just very humorous. There's like the cat is really funny and he tells lots of jokes and oh, it's amazing. It's so good. It kind of gives me Undead Girl Gang vibes, which is not one of my favorite books, but yet I keep thinking about it. <laughs> so if you like like the style of Undead Girl Gang with how the friends kind of all interact with each other and talk to each other and goof off and make fun of each other and there's like kind of like a silliness to it, you'll love this. It was so good and it was everything I wanted to start me off for fall. Lauren Fort Gang was such a good narrator. She's narrated something else that I listened to that I can't remember, but this kind of upped her up in my opinion because of her voices were so good for this particular book. The way she did the cats and the demons and the witches and all that stuff, it was <sighs> excellent. I honestly want to just like listen to this one again already because I loved it so much. So this one was a five star read for me. Next up, I listened to Two Dark Rains by Kendar Blake, narrated by Amy Landon. It is officially not fall unless I listen to a Three Dark Crowns novel. So I listened to Two Dark Rains and also Queens of Fenburn to prepare for Five Dark Fates, which I'm going to be listening to here very soon. I just got it in on audio for October, which is the last and final book in the Three Dark Crown series. So I have listened to one of these books, or one or two of them, every single fall for like three or four years now. And it's just not fall unless I listen to this series. I'm going to be so sad when I don't have a new one next year. So this is about three sisters who born to fight to the death for the throne. That's the overall synopsis, but it is so much richer and deeper than that. The world is so well built. A lot of people find this slow. I feel like on audio it wasn't slow because the world is so beautifully woven. There's one sister that's an elementalist, there's one that's a naturalist, and one that is a poisoner. And they all have to learn these different skills to use against each other, but they kind of all don't really want to. And then there's like these romances that are tied in, and there's these heads of the council, and just, oh, it's this whole queendom, and it's so great, and you get a lot of the backstory of the world, and it just is so amazing. This is currently sitting at my favorite series right now, as far as fantasy goes, because 
each book it just gets better and better and better. I don't personally find them slow, other people do, but I just think the richness of the world is worth it. Amy Landon is such an amazing narrator for these stories. She kind of uses the same voice for all of the male characters, but it really just doesn't bother me. I love it. I'm so pumped, but so scared, but so excited about the next book. So. Of course I gave this one five stars upon rereading. Then I listened to Midwinter's Blood by Marcus Sed Sedwick, narrated by Julian Rind Tut. So this one was recommended by Haley in Bookland in one of her like fall reads videos. I don't know how to describe this one. It's seven different stories like about passion and love and they're separated by centuries. You're actually getting told the stories backwards so you're getting the newest story first and then you're going like back in time because all the stories interconnect and there's like past lives and things like that. I feel like this is one I need to read and listen to like several times because of how deep and in depth it is. But each story sucks you in. All set on this Scandian, Scandinavian island called The Blessed and there's this whole mystery and like lore there that you're unraveling through each story over time and there's like an archaeologist and there's a vampire and there's a ghost and there's a viking and a painter and just so many different things and you're kind of trying to piece everything together. It was so beautiful. It's only a five and a half hour audiobook so it took me like three and a half hours to get through because I listened at like 1.6 speed. Julian did such a good job narrating these audiobooks and it was just, I feel like this was like a, such a really special, special read. I highly encourage you to add it to your TBR. I feel like even in physical form it was just so beautifully written and it was a really nice little love story as well. Next up I reread The Immortal by Gillian Shields via audiobook. This one is narrated by Emily Durant. So this is a book that I read I think two years ago I read books one and book two. I read this book actually in one sitting. It's sort of like a gothic fantasy type book about a boarding school and there are like witches and girls but it's set in modern times but you're going back and forth between journal entries from the past from one particular person and then things in the future with our new lead character that is sent to this boarding school and kind of discovering all this like magic and mystery. So I loved this book when I first read it. It just I was such a fast fun read and it wasn't like overly done and it was just really simple but nicely tied together and I really really enjoyed it and I couldn't stop reading it. And this is like 350 pages so it's not exactly a small book. It's pretty average and I've just read it really fast. And then I read the second book and I just didn't love it as much but I was wondering if it was because we were getting more into the fall time and I was kind of wanting to read other things and sometimes if my brain is distracted then I won't like fully pay attention. So I wanted to reread it because I wanted to finish the series and I I did like it on audiobook um, not as much as I did reading it because I didn't really like Emily Durant, Durant's narration. I found her narration a little bit annoying. It was doable but not as enjoyable as just so many of my other wonderful narrators. So I probably will slowly continue to read this series because there's four books overall. They're kind of fun, they're older YA, but yeah, it's enjoyable, it's a good fall read. So I think I gave this one 3.5 stars on my reread. And I finally got around to The Vanishing Season by Jodie Lynn Anderson, narrated by Cassandra Campbell. I've had this one on my TBR for quite a while. I absolutely love Jodie Lynn Anderson's um, Tiger Lily, which is the Peter Pan retelling, and also Midnight at the Electric, which is like historical fiction mixed with sci-fi. It's just an amazing book. I like her writing style overall. This one is about a girl that moves to a town and then girls and people kind of start to go missing and there's supposed to be a mystery around it. That's like the description that they give you like on Goodreads and stuff and it's just not really accurate. It's more about this girl and like her friendships and her like kind of growing up and learning and the whole time I was listening to this like I liked the narrator. She did a good job but the book itself you're getting like um, a narration also from a different perspective and then you're getting like our main character and then her making new friends and like falling in love and stuff like that. Like I liked it and it was kind of atmospheric and good but it wasn't like as creepy and mysterious as I was thinking it was going to be which is a lot of the negative reviews say on Goodreads like it's kind of pitched wrong. I kind of didn't really see the point and I kind of didn't like the way that it ended and I I got where it was trying to go but I didn't love it so I just wound up giving this one three stars like it's still enjoyable but I'm not really sure like where to put this one. And the last book that I listened to was This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. This is a reread for me. This is narrated by Therese Plummer. So I read this one last year in October I believe. I had mixed feelings about it like I gave it four stars because I really like the concept so this is set, ugh, it's so hard to explain. It's kind of like dystopian 
fantasy. So we're in modern times, I think, it might be the future, and there are monsters that are being born out of violence. So if a violent act is committed, like murder or rape or something horrible, then a monster that comes kind of in a human form is born and roams the earth. And so then there's more acts of the violence and then there's more monsters. And there's three kinds of monsters. One that's kind of vampire-y and one that like steals your soul through song. And then there's another kind. And I can't remember, like you can kind of tell them apart and there's ways to tell them apart and tell if people are monsters or not. And there's all these like locked down cities and all these protocols in place to keep the monsters out. And you can wear like metal to keep the monsters from hurting you and like all this stuff. And so we're following along with August Flynn, who is a monster, and you're getting his story because he kind of is like born as a teenage boy out of nowhere, and he has like these monstrous skills. And then, and then we're following Kate Harker, whose father is kind of in charge of like protecting people in the city, and so he is like in charge of doing all these putting these things in place to keep the monsters in line. And she keeps going, getting sent to different boarding schools and finally she gets kicked out of enough that they send her home and she wants to be like, kind of like with her dad and kind of controlling things and she's kind of ruthless and all this stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm really scared that I don't like Victoria Schwab's writing style very much. So uh, the first time I read this, I just remember it taking a really long time and me not loving it as much as other people. Like I like the concepts and the writing is not bad. I just, I think it's a little bit slower and I just couldn't get quite as attached to the characters as I wanted to. Upon rereading, kind of similar, like I kind of liked it more because it's just such a beautiful concept. Like I loved the monsters that play the songs to steal your soul and I love the um, different things about that. It's just really cool. I love Victoria Schwab's like her, her ideas of books. Like every single book she's written I like want to read because of the synopses. But then like I DNF City of Ghosts last year on audio and I'm hoping it was just the narrator. So I'm in the middle of our dark duet right now. So stay tuned to see what I think of that because it's not going the best. I wound up giving this one 3.5 stars upon rereading even though I did kind of like it more. It also kind of pointed some things out that I liked less. So I don't know. And then for some reason this year is like the year of everyone reading this again. <laughs> so like a bunch of booktubers and a bunch of my friends like all are reading our dark duet right now and like we're not doing it together. It's just like the just it's just like the year that everyone's decided to do that and they're all like DNFing and unhauling it and so I'm a little bit scared. I usually don't let other people's opinions influence me as far as making me not like it but if they don't like it and I'm already feeling that way then it kind of confirms me and makes me feel like I'm not weird. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Have you guys read this one? Let me know what you think. I know there's like a ton of fans out there. Um, I have a lot of Victoria Schwab's other books, so I hope I like them in the future. But anyway, I wound up giving this one 3.5 stars. So I'm in the middle of our Dirk duet and one other audiobook as well. So I almost made it to 10 audiobooks this month and I want to do so badly because Jeff and I are in the middle of an audiobook as well that we started way in the beginning of September. But overall, I had an amazing reading month. I really loved a lot of the things I read and I got a lot of stuff done and a lot of stuff like caught up and like off my TBR. So let me know if you guys like audiobooks. Let me know if you listen anything great down below in the comments. I'd love to hear about it and I'll see you guys next time on the bright side.